their ability to knock pucks down, to, to make those plays. The deflections in front of the net, he scored one in the last series that was exactly like Matthew shot tipped to the far post. Um, no, I mean, he, you touch the puck, it, it's, it's true of defensemen as well, especially offensive defensemen. They're going to have the puck so many times, they're going to make one of those, and we won't, we won't have to deal with it. Third row on the left, Dan. Uh, Paul, against Boston, you guys had to score a little bit more to win those games. Against Carolina and Toronto, you were, I think it was 6-1, and one, scoring three or fewer in a game. This series, it's one game, and it's not, I'm not putting anything on Bob Rossi here, but do you feel as though you're going to have to generate more offense, put the puck in a little bit more than just 2-3 three, three to win these games against this particular team? I, I understand the question. Um... I'll try to take my time with the answer. The, f the first piece, we weren't not trying to score against Carolina. Right? We would have taken five in any of those games. Um, we felt in the Boston series after game four, we got to our offensive game. We learned some things about that, that style of defense that we were able to. We probably had more offense in that game last night than straight through the entire Carolina series, though. Like, it... it both teams didn't come, didn't score on their best chances by far, right? There's, so you look at how Vegas has generated goals over the course of this playoffs. It's not a whole lot from their back end, and they get two last night from the back end, right? Pucks that just get through. Both teams have relied on their forwards an awful lot to generate those kind of things. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to leave that game last night saying the difference in the game is that we didn't generate enough, right? I also, we'll look at, and, and they will too, we'll look at everything they gave up and see how do we mitigate this? How do we eliminate some of these chances that they got? Um, we, can, we can make an improvement with our sticks defensively for sure, uh, but, there, but there is not, in my mind, a need. I didn't feel we were stifled in that game last night at all. Front right. Good morning, Paul. Um, last night after the game, the post game that I heard from Vegas, they kept more than one player said that this team is trying to bait us right now. But we've seen this style of play all season from you and also in the playoffs. So it's not baiting. It's just the aggressive style that you've implemented with your players, isn't it? Yeah, there were 87 hits in the first game against Boston. And that hasn't really come off. That's the style of game. I think there was more emotion early in the game. But that wouldn't be true of Florida Vegas. It's game one of the final, right? There's lots of lots of juice and energy. Um, finish our hits. Going to try to stay out of the penalty box, but we're not going to pull off the physicality. We can't. It's what we do well. Front right, Mike. Um, Anthony Declare was uh, talking the other day just about how tough that rehab was. Mm -hmm. uh, can you kind of bring us through just? behind the scenes, how grueling that was for him to come back. And the other thing he talked about was uh, he felt like he had a bad rap in the league, and that's why he really represented himself as an, as an agent. Um, how impressed that you were that he was willing to kind of, you know, bet on himself? Well, you always like that as a player, right, when they take hold of their own career. I wasn't a part of it. Um, I've done all my own contracts, too. I might, I might hire Anthony for, for if I get another one. I might have him do it. But to his rehab, specific to that player, this is a pure skater, right? His, his number one asset, he is incredibly fast. And then you take the rehab, he couldn't do anything. So this rehab six months long. He's in every one of our meetings. But for the most part, other than some really grueling sessions, none of them are on the ice. And you have to, I mean, we're not, we're not skating him hard when he's at 60%. Right, he's got to get to full strength before we can get him on the ice. So then he has to start almost from the beginning again, and it's on ice conditioning. But you're not even out there touching pucks for six months. So you, you're completely removed from your sport with this injury. And he came back in his first five game back, he was outstanding. I mean, he, he couldn't score, but he had 25 chances. And, and then he got sick uh, on two separate occasions. Um, and that set him back, and we felt that just toward the very end, he scored in his last regular season game, and we felt he was starting to come. And, and, he's, and he has. In these playoffs, he's continued to get better and better. Right side, second row. Coach is checking the status of uh, Etulo Storanen today. Uh, he won't skate today. Uh, thoughts about tomorrow? Maybe neither will anybody else. 
Um, we will wait till tomorrow and find out. And then just also looking at Nick Cousins and Greg Kogutis both took some, a little bit of a beating last yeah. night. How are they feeling today? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Left side, second so row. Good. Paul, um, every coach has a different philosophy on this, uh, but the coaching fraternity is, is, is a pretty tight one. And sometimes, especially late in the playoffs like this, a coach will once in a while reach out to someone else for some insight. I'm wondering if you reached out to your good pal, Pete DeBoer, and, and, you know, I mean, obviously he, so, he knows the Golden Knights. Yeah. Well, oh, we would have talked over the course of the year, right? Just, uh, but I'm not calling a guy after, I'm not answering my phone after a series ends, right? So I'm not, just a little respect for the profession. But more to the point, if you, you've got, like, we're both mechanics. He's working on Porsches, I'm working on Ferraris. So there's not actually, yeah, there's engines, but there's a completely different operation going under the hood. So there's not as much inside information as you think. Like, we all got TVs and we got four angles on just about everything that happens. And, and there's, there's, there's actually not nearly as many secrets to this game as people think. Right? So he sent a text, good luck. I sent a thank you. Sunscreen. Um, he still has his place here, I think, and he's in Dallas. So uh, wanted to be respectful of the emotions that you go through, right? They're real. We'll take three more questions for Coach on the right side, Tom. Paul, you kind of mentioned last night the contrast in, from going from Carolina's PK to this PK. What's, I guess, the challenge of adjusting to that? And for you on your, on your PK, you got a sort of goal, so you probably have that. Are there any adjustments you feel like you need to make against their power play from last night? I, I mean, I felt we were a little slow early on. We cracked a bar, had another good chance. Um, so we'll, I mean, both teams will probably speed up on their power play once they get a feel of the kill. We gave, gave up the goal and we gave up another A chance, actually being too aggressive at times, but we don't want to completely pull that off either. Those are the learning things in a series that happen, right? You learn their forecheck a little bit more. You know, they put pucks in a little bit deep a little bit more on us than they did in, the, in their previous series, but they, it was the right thing for them to do at the time. So there's, there's things, these two teams don't see each other. The game one, you, you kind of get to learn a little bit about the special teams, especially, and then the, what, the game will take on its own style. Vegas and Florida will create their own style of game, and it'll be different than every other series that we've seen. It's, clearly, there'll be similarities, but because these two teams have their own unique tendencies. How it looks together will look differently than any of the other series. Two more for Coach, left side, Ian. Hey, Paul. Uh, Eric Stahl said a couple of days ago that this group needed you, but he said he thinks you needed this mm. group as well. I'm wondering what you think about that, and maybe you could talk a little bit about just what this season has meant to you on a personal level after leaving Winnipeg. Yeah. It's, it's not after leaving Winnipeg because I still got a big chunk of my heart there and a place on the water. Um, <laughs> ah, I like to fish, that's why I said that. Okay, Eric's a really bright guy and intuitive. Um, so there would be a handful of things that I think I'm pretty good at or at least I had a pretty good handle on what this team needed. And that's just from years of watching teams kind of try to go from, and this is true of the Hartford Whalers to Carolina there in, the, in that run, you know, hadn't made the playoffs in a long time and get to a point that they're pretty good. And then in Winnipeg, kind of the same thing. There's a progression these teams go on and what, there's a threshold of skill that they hit. And when they get that threshold, then they get real happy with it and they play that game. And why wouldn't you? Right? They get to that 24, 25-year-old, they're making plays. And then the playoffs hit, and it's a completely different game. But I have enjoyed this year as much as any, and, and in some ways more than I ever thought you could enjoy as a coach. I came into this league at a time where you just growled all the time. Right? It's, it's 28 years ago. So the... I mean, you, you've all been around. You've seen the culture shift and how people interact, coaches and players. I mean, it's, it's completely different. But I did come in a long time ago, so you bring a little bit of that with you. And when you're, when you're trying to take a team from, you know, hasn't made the playoffs in a long time or, I don't know, five or six years there in, in Hartford and then hadn't won a playoff series in Winnipeg, 
you are grinding a little bit, right? You're growling a little bit. This was a different animal because because they're so much fun. The base of that is, and you watch our game last night, we made some mistakes. If you've watched us play them, we make some mistakes, but they, they play hard, right? They truly, Matthew turns that one over, I'm not saying a word to him about it, like, because he's worked his butt off and produced and been great. So that's my experience with these guys right from the first five days of camp. It was hard, but in truth, it was hard because they made it hard. Right? You can only push an athlete so hard, and if they don't want to go any harder, that's all you're getting out. Some guys get real good at looking like they're going fast up and down the ice, and they're really skating now, coach. These guys went so hard, and then... So they made coming to the rink fun. My staff, too. I, I got eight guys that we work with, and uh, yeah, you call them assistant coaches, that's not right. There's just eight coaches in the room. We talk hockey all day, we laugh, and we have fun, but, but we work hard. So the one maybe underlying thing that um, you don't know it is that none of this is casual. So I'm up here and I'm lighthearted because it was a game and it was played last night and why do I got to be in a bad mood today just because we lost the game. That also doesn't do my team any bit of good to be growling up here or sending messages. It's not what that group needs from me. It's not how I want to operate. But. But these guys have made it fun for me because they allowed the coaches to laugh. And they did it because they worked so damn hard, right? And they went through hard things and they, and they chirp each other in a wonderful way. That the, uh, the art of chirping on the ice is, is really, it's a dying art. It's just, it's just that some of those guys were awesome back in the day, right? I mean, really good. They researched you. Really good stuff. They put time into it. But these guys are pretty funny, and, and you get a glimpse of it. And they've made it, it is. It's been an incredibly fun year. And, and I think the, the quiet undercurrent here is um, we've worked really, really hard to make it fun. That's not the right way to say that. We've worked really, really hard to allow it to be fun. Last question, back left. Well, go to basically answered my question here, but. Uh, Play, play, play. But with, you're gonna ask it anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Ha, yeah. Right. Playing with the puck under the pressure at your own end. How does it? Uh, uh, is the game so much different if you compare it to the series against Carolina? And how do you feel after the first game? You guys succeeded playing with the puck under the pressure. Carolina is the hardest gap team in the NHL. Their defense will set the gap at the tops of the circles at your end. There is there is no room. There's no ice. What makes this difference is then, then you can play in behind that, right? You don't control the puck as much in a, in a game like Carolina because the, they're going to be sitting on top of you and the puck goes in behind and becomes a skating series at that point. Most of their pressure is done by their forwards, right? And their D will hold and, and, and give ice. So you have to do a bit of both because if you're just spitting behind the pressure, it's to the defenseman. So we've got to be able to control that a little bit at the right times. Thank you for your time. Okay. Coach.